Then we go to Nigeria. And in Nigeria, this is what they say. Say, Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Come on, say, Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Come on, somebody say, say, Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Kosini, Kosini to Babire. Kosini. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. Come on, just put your hands together. Two. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Let's go. One, two, three. Go. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Today I'm going to call upon my pastor. My own pastor. He's going to dance for us. Are you ready, somebody? Are you ready for my own pastor? Are you ready for my own pastor? Are you ready for my own resident pastor, Pastor Keith? Is he going to dance for us? Are you ready, somebody? Let's put our hands together for Pastor Keith as he's going to dance for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey. Come on, somebody. He will dance for us on Sunday. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can you tell my own pastor? <laughs> Praise God. Glory be to God. Oh. Just looks so amazing. Amen. Put up two hands for yourself once again. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Just give high five to your neighbor. Tell them you're welcome in the presence of God. If your neighbor is not doing that, you can change the seat. Hallelujah. And once again, we have the woman of God in the house. So, I saw, I saw that a lot of uh, daughters of mine, sons of mine, it's like you missed your mother so much. What, what, what can I do? <laughs> it's good that you are celebrating your mother. Because you are not a product of only your father. But it's a combination of two people to produce you. Praise God. So once again, uh, it's a blessing to have you here. God bless you. Isn't it not nice? Isn't it not nice? One thing that I know is that uh, there is unique grace. On our life. And uh, there are some times God can use me in a mighty way. Yeah, you know, sometimes God can show off. So God can show off. May your eyes be shut. So God can show off in me to a point that even myself, I fail to, to understand. Praise God. But uh, I 
after ministering and getting tired. It's very important to find somebody who believes that you're really caught. Put up two hands for your mother once again. She believes in me. Yeah, she does. Even when I had no members, she was my first one. Praise God. So, without wasting much of our time, God tonight is ready for you. Look, I taught you last Tuesday how to handle a prophet. I can have a lot of things to speak to a lot of people. In fact, God can give me even 10 things about your life. Don't think when I prophesy about your name, that is the end of prophecy. There are things that I don't mention because when I look at you, I'm able to perceive that you are not ready to receive. So the best thing is better I give you even one and keep the nine. So you must choose tonight whether God must release the nine and keep the one thing. Which one do you prefer? Huh? For God to release the nine, it depends the way you behave. The way you behave. Remember, it is an environment that you create. I personally told you that most of you, the reason why when you come in this place, it is very easy to pray is because there is a frequency. There's a frequency. But when you go to your house there, you will fail to pray because there's a network of a witch doctor. So you must understand that this place where God has brought you it is a unique place. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. If he wants to bless you, then you must be ready to receive his blessing. You must understand that the blessing is not by force. I can't enforce the blessing on you. I can't. I can't enforce the blessing on you. You must understand, in such kind of an environment where there is a high level of grace, high level of grace, high level of grace, where anything can happen, God can change just change your life in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. I was telling them, I was telling Apostle Peter and uh, Apostle Tav, I said, prophets are not sent to pray for people. They're not sent to pray for people. They are sent to speak a word. And if only you can hear this word, if only you can hear this word, then you shall prosper. I receive. You shall prosper. I receive. Naaman, he had a problem. Like you. Like you. He had a problem. Exactly like you. In fact, for him, it was worse. He had leprosy, and every time when you had leprosy in the Bible, they could remove you out of the city because you were regarded as an outcast. But the Bible says when this man had leprosy, the Bible says he heard that in Israel there was a prophet. He heard in Israel that there was a prophet. Look, there was something before you came here, there was something that drew you here. It's either a testimony, it's either you heard from somebody of what God is doing. And the Bible says, then Naaman left everything. Like you, you have left your houses. 
you have left all precious things and you have come to have an encounter with the God of this man. Amen. And the Bible says, when Naaman arrived by the premises of Elisha, the Bible says he did not even see Elisha. There are most of you, you can't even see me because there, there's a lot of protocol around me. So it is the only privilege that you have now. You can see me face to face. And the Bible says, then Elisha sent the word of prophecy to Gehaz to tell Naaman to dip himself seven times, which is instruction. So when the word of God is coming, it comes with a lot of instructions. A lot of instructions. And Gehazi told Naaman, go and dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times. And on number seven, you shall be made whole. But when Naaman was approaching the premises of the prophet, the Bible says the man came with gifts. He came with an offering to connect to the God. So when the word is coming, when the word is coming, remember the principle, the prophetic character. The prophetic character. You don't wait for the prophet. You begin now to sow. And the Bible says that then Naaman came with a heavy offering. And the Bible says he gave it. Just to connect to the anointing of this servant of God. And the Bible says when this seven, when Gehazi gave him the instruction to go and dip himself seven times, the Bible says he found that the leprosy left him. Listen, I don't know what is your leprosy. Some of you, your leprosy can be financial problems. Some of you, your leprosy can be diabetes. Some of you, your leprosy can be your husband wants to kick you out of your house. Some of you, your leprosy can be your boss does not want to give you promotion. Some of you, your leprosy can be you have been on one position for a long time. Nothing is happening. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that there is a Elisha somewhere who is going to give you divine instruction. And that divine instruction will produce divine benefits. So you just need an instruction. You don't need many words. You don't need many words. Most people in the Bible, every time they approached prophets, they only said, speak only one word. Speak only one, not many words. I don't need many things. I don't need, I don't need many stories. I just need one word. And when that word has been spoken, mixed with faith, it will produce a result. I believe tonight, it is your night. I believe tonight that God is about to catapult you to another dimension. It is up to you. The Bible says, if you can't believe, you shall speak, you shall decree to this mountain. So, Elisha will come and declare some things. And those things will not just be mere words. It will be words of power. Words of life. Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So I want God to open up your eyes that you may see. I want God to open up your ears that you may hear his voice. And I want God to give you a high level of sensitivity. As the word of God is coming, the devil will not rob the word of God away from your life. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, shout it. Shout it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, as your word is coming, change my issue, turn my life into a testimony. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Lift your hand and shout, Amen. Amen. Put your two hands for Jesus, wherever you are. I said, clap your hands.
That is for demons. Clap hands for God. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Three things before I call the minister for today. Three things that I love to see with all my sons and daughters. Number one, pen. Number two, notebook. Number three, Bible. Those three things. That's what moves this ministry. You don't just come here to receive prophecy. You come here to learn. To learn. Are you ready? Do you have those three things? Hey, do you have those three things? Do you have those three things? So it is a blessing tonight. I'm, uh, I'm sitting down. I'm relaxing. Hallelujah. I'm relaxing. And uh, there is a great man of God in our midst. And uh, I've been with him for quite a long time. And uh, we share things in common. Praise God. And uh, it's going to bless you. If you can hear me, your father, then you can hear him. Hallelujah. So be ready. The word of God is going to come in power. Are you prepared? I'm here to prepare you. I'm like a John. I'm like a John. I know you, all my sons and daughters. I know you are very stubborn. So before he comes and minister, I need to prepare him so that you cannot disappoint me. Praise God. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's put our two hands as we celebrate Bishop Duquen Bishmanda as he comes to bless us. Thank you, Jesus. You may take your seat. It's good to be here tonight. And, uh, I'm so honored to stand in front of you and to be a blessing to you tonight as I share God's word. <clears throat> yeah, it's good to see Mama Hope. We love you. <clears throat> we love you so much. We missed you. I, I was telling, I was saying, in our absence, home was feeling like. Uh, a refugee camp. We were fighting with AJ, and the father, and uh, but the moment she came, the atmosphere changed. Starting from the kitchen to all the places. So it's good to have a mother in the house. Let's put our hands together for her in Jesus' name. So, it's good to have walked this uh, Christian walk to have been in ministry with uh, Prophet Didi Isaac. Uh, he's been a friend, a brother, a colleague for many years. And so, standing in, on his platform, it, it gives me joy to see what God is doing in his life. And so, let's put our hands together as we celebrate the prophet of God. And besides that, uh, it's also an honor to minister in front of the womb that carried prophet Didi Isaac. Prophet Didi Isaac's mother. Mama, we love you so much. Amen. 
You know, it is, it's, it's a great honor to have parents. And uh, for us to have her is a blessing. Amen. And all the leadership, Pastor Keith and all the deacons, deaconesses, and everyone who has come tonight, I believe that uh, your life will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to share God's word. And as the word of God is coming, I, I want you to enter your spirit and produce results. The word of God does not come to entertain. The word of God comes to, to change lives and produce results. And so after I am done ministering, I'll see how the Lord will lead me. But there are certain people that I would love here to honor God and connect with the word of God tonight with a seat that will usher you to your next level, especially in the area of marriage. There are people here who have been single for a long time. And you, you have tried to get married, but things are not working. But as you connect tonight, I want to believe that uh, there's going to be a manifestation of the word in your life. And also those who are married, some of you, you have been struggling. Your marriage has been on rocks. You, 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 you. And you are believing God for a serious turnaround in your marriage. And then there are those also who are believing God for debt cancellation. There are also those who are believing God for healing. I, I, I was supposed to fly home tomorrow. In fact, I was supposed to go yesterday. But then somehow, I remained, I, is that correct English? I stayed. I was supposed to go back tomorrow. But for the sake of those people, what I'll do, I'll tell you the time tomorrow I'll be here. I've never done this yet. Personally, to meet every person that is going to connect to the word. And I'm going to pray with you, give you a prophetic word. Last night, I, I, I received a, a phone call from the U.S. I think it was 2 a.m. I was preaching in India in April last year. And then there was a young man that came to see me. And so they came as a family, three brothers. And they brought me a gift. And then when I looked at this young man, I, I, I gave him a prophetic word. I told him that uh, I'm seeing you flying abroad. And he connected and, and then I left. So yesterday he called me. And he never had my number, so he looked for me on Facebook and then sent me a message, say, I have a testimony. So he called me, said, Bishop, after you gave me a prophetic word, you know, I, I, I rarely meet people one-on-one -on -one when I'm a visitor. I meet my children home. But uh, for him, he's a brother. I feel very liberated to minister the way God wants me to minister. So he called me, he said, uh, after you gave me that prophetic word, just a few weeks, I got a visa, a scholarship, and I'm now in the U.S. So I've been looking for your number all this long, but since last year, so he says, I, I saw you ministering at Prophet DDI's exchange. And then I had to find a way to locate you. And so I, I believe that uh, when you connect to the word of God with a, a heart that is pure, there's always a manifestation. If a person can give their entire salary to a witch doctor, what more to a man of God? But the problem is that every time we talk about connecting, 
people co uh, complain. But I want you to know that it works. I'm a, a testimony of that. If you look at me, I look very, very not and very simple. But I'm a serious and a dangerous giver. There are several times I've emptied my account for the work of God. Where I don't even know where the next miracle will come from. But God is faithful. I come from a family that has got a lot of battles. And for me to be where I am, I've fought a lot of issues. And I'm still here standing. And so I believe as the word of God comes, your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. And so I want us to get to the Bible quickly. And uh, my scriptures are a bit long, the portions of scripture we are going to read, but it's very necessary. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, starting from verse 5. John chapter 4, verse 5. The Bible says, Then he came to a city of Sam called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now the well of Jacob was there. Jesus, being tired from his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, or about twelve hours. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Now if you look at that, it's very unusual. Uh, when you look at in biblical times, most times women would go to draw water in the evening around 5, 6. But this woman came around midday. And you, the women to walk in groups when they go to the well. But she came alone because there was a, a discrimination and a stigma. stigma around her because of the kind of a woman that she was. Eh? So she, she must have been a lonely woman. And for her to go to the well, she has to make sure when nobody was there, she sneaked in to get some water. And the Bible says, and Jesus says unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. And so this kind of a woman that uh, is a professional, not a prostitute, I would say, and then she finds a man who engages her in a conversation. And so already on the back of her mind, she's beginning to think, of course, that maybe he's one of those customers Today, I've got a big catch. But then Jesus says, uh, give me water to drink. And you must understand that uh, in our African culture, uh, I, I think it's also the same here in South Africa, that when you, you, you visit a home or you, you are thirst, it's very easy to ask for water because water is very basic to life. And so Jesus begins his conversation in such a basic way and says, please, madam, can I have some water to drink? <sighs> and the Bible says, number nine, then says the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that you being a Jew, she's saying Jesus is a Jew, ask drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If only you knew the gift of God. And who it is that says to thee, 
give me to drink. Thou wouldest us have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman says unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And he drank there of himself and his children and his kept. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water again, but whomsoever that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto her, Sir, give me this water that I think out hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said well, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. She was a dangerous woman. And he whom thou now hast, that's number six, is not thy husband. In that sayest thou truly. The woman said unto her, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers washed in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem, Worship the Father. Yea, you worship, you know not what? We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. And when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. Now we go to uh, verse 29. It says, Come, see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Luke 24. I don't like reading long scriptures, but it's good for some people because we are doing Bible reading here. Luke chapter 24, verse 13. I'll be quickly, I'll be quick, sorry. Luke 24, verse 13. The Bible says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they walked together, they talked together of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another, as you walk and are sad? And there one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast thou not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, might indeed, and word before God and all the people. Now look at this. He says Jesus was a prophet, might indeed, or in works, might also in the word before God. So every prophet must have the ability to be mighty, number one, in the word. And then also in deeds, 
if you find a prophet who only performs without the word, is a sangoma. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been we, he we should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our camp and made us astonished, which were early at the sepul sepulchre. And when they found not his boat, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels, which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O oh, foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And as they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he pretended as though he was going further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is, a, it is toward evening. And the day is far spent. And he went in and to tarry with them. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it, and broke and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. May God bless the reading of his word. The power of fellowshipping with Jesus is the title. The power of fellowshipping with Jesus. The word fellowship uh, is simply connotes the act of a, uh, a group of people who share a common interest. It means companionship and friendly association. To fellowship means to interact in order to know each other better. Now, somebody said fellowship means fellows in a ship. Now, you must understand that... Uh, is the desire of God for you and I to fellowship with him. Is the desire of God for, he, for us to have a daily fellowship with him. And uh, fellowship produces impartation. Fellowship produces impartation. If, let me, uh, let me give, put it this way. How many of you have noticed this? That when people get married, I don't know how or maybe it's just the mind, but you start hearing people say, these two look alike. Huh? It's like there's an impartation that takes place. And uh, husband and wife. Trying to see the, the, the impartation. I don't know who has imparted who. He has imparted already. She's beginning to... If a husband is a liar... There's going to be an impartation. Very soon, the wife would also become a liar. That's the power of fellowship. Ask Ananias and Sapphira. These were people that were married. So there was this impartation of lying. 
because of fellowship. So fellowship produces impartation. You become what you fellowship with. Jesus. You become what you fellowship with. So if you fellowship with Jesus, you become like him. That's what the Bible says. He who walks with the wise shall be wise. So fellowship produces impartation. If you walk with the prophet for too long, you begin to do small, small. Have you noticed that if uh, your pastor has a certain way of dressing, as years go by, all the sons tend to begin to dress like their father. Is because as you are fellowshipping, as you are interacting, there's a rubbing on of character. There's an exchange. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. So if you interact with me too much, if that's why if you want to become a comedian, don't work with lawyers. Uh, you, you work with comedians for an impartation to take place. Number two, impartation produces or reveals the secrets. So, sorry, fellowship produces secrets. When people fellowship, they begin to open up to each other. There are things that I've done in life that I can't just come and tell you. Say, I, I bought it five times. I killed somebody. But the more I interact with you, the more I fellowship with you. Oh, Jesus. I begin to open up to you. I begin to allow you to get deeper into me. Because a human being is not a shallow being. There's no church here. Man is not a shallow being. Man is a deep personality. There are deep things in man that when you fellowship with him, when he opens his gates, you begin to see things that you, you never thought were there. And then also, God is a deep God. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so when you fellowship with him, he begins to open up. Jesus. Amen. You begin to get deeper in him Amen. and begin to know the secrets of the most high God. The Bible says the secret things belong to God, but them that are revealed belong to us. So when you fellowship he begins to open up certain doors within him that allow you to see how to run your business, how to run your marriage. It comes out of fellowship. I pray for you tonight that as you are fellowshipping with the word of God, you, 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 secrets are being revealed. And one way by which if you want to hear secrets is to save food. Oh, yeah. If you bring food and the men sit around the food, all of a sudden, you begin to hear things you have never heard. As they are eating, ah, Apostle Peter, you know what? Brother so, 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 hey, he will say, ah, this food is nice. As, uh, as they are fellowshipping over the food, it's like there's this opening also. It's the power of fellowship which has been anointed by food. 
Hallelujah. So fellowship is powerful. Fellowship produces tangible results. If a man fellowships with a man for too long, a woman and a man, I mean deeper fellowship. Huh? They don't only fellowship, they produce something that looks like them. And some guys would, do, oh, would deny responsibility. And so when you deny responsibility, then that's when now we begin to look for, for features on the baby. Say, but Peter, but Apostle Peter, you are saying no. That you are not the one responsible. But the nose of this young man looks somehow like yours. But somehow men have got a way of dodging. And so if he dodges too much, we take this thing to the next level. We go to the lab and get the DNA and begin to examine. At the end of the day, sir, you cannot refuse. But now, Jesus comes to a city of Sychar in Samaria. And his disciples leave him. They go to buy food in the city. And when they are still away, a woman comes. But the Bible says when they came back and found him speaking to a woman, the Bible says they were wondering why he was speaking to a woman. That's a very deep statement. So it means some of them, I believe, this is my belief, that some of them we are beginning to be so suspicious. Say, but maybe some of them knew this woman. Maybe before they became apostles, they had some interaction and fellowship with her somewhere. So they knew how dangerous this woman was and they are saying, oh, oh, the master will be finished. You remember when that prostitute came and began to play with the feet of Jesus? You know, prostitutes, there's a way they, 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 they are designed. Let me, let me. If a sister touches you, Apostle Peter, like this, how are you, my brother? Usually the, the touch is not very complicated. But if a prostitute touches you, it's like the fingers are trained to arouse certain things within a man. And so, when this prostitute came and began to play with the feet of Jesus, and she took her hair, began to walk, people, Pharisees began saying, oh, 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 oh. If Jesus only what knew what kind of a woman this is. And so, so before the disciples came, Jesus says, uh, Woman, give me water to drink. And so, of course, you know, when a man is approaching a lady, they don't just go and say, You, I want you. They begin with five simple things. Ha, ah, sister, you're looking good. Your hair is like from Jamaica, you know. You remind me of my late aunt. Every time I look at you, I just feel consoled. With the, the brother is lying. He's trying to find some ground to, you know. And so, Jesus says, give me some water. It could have been a starting point. And I think she was thinking, uh, lay low. Today, another customer. Remember, she's a serious woman. She knows the language of men. There's a way men talk. Can I talk to sisters? Yes. You, you, you can tell this man, and we sisters are very, are very sensitive. And so, but then, as they are talking, the woman prophet says, uh, how is it that you a Jew? Eh? She's referring to Jesus as a Jew. Say, you are asking me for water. 
knowing that Jews and Samaritans have no dealings. Jesus, help me here. Because Samaritans were half Jews. They were a product of Assyrians and Jews. It, there was an intermarriage that had taken place during the Assyrian uh, captivity. And so Jews never liked Samaritans and Samaritans never liked Jews. Jews had their own temple in Jerusalem and the Samaritans had their, their own temple in Samaria. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? And so they never liked each other. They were enemies. But then, as they are talking now, Jesus says, if only you knew the man that you are talking to, if only you knew the man that is talking to you, you'd have given him water. And in exchange, you'd have given you living water. So Jesus is showing us here that before I give you living water, give me something. Provoke something in my insight. And then the Bible says, the woman says, uh, Sir, you have nothing to use to draw water from the well, and the well is deep. Says, woman, you have no understanding. The water that I will give you, you will never thirst again. I declare over your life, as you encounter Jehovah, as you encounter God, may every thirst in your life be, de be gone in the name of Jesus. And so the Bible says, she says, uh, give me this water. And then Jesus changes the talk. Says, okay, before I give you this water, go and call your husband. The conversation now is taking another dimension. He asked for water and now He's saying, go and call your husband. So there's a shift now in the talk. Oh, God. And the woman says, I have no husband. And then Jesus says, you have said well, for you have had five husbands. And the one you are living with is number six. And he is not your husband. Now look at this. The woman then says, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now look at the way it begins. As they begin the conversation, Jesus is referred to as a Jew. She says, you are a Jew. How? We have no dealings now. But as they get deeper in the fellowship, as they get deeper in the conversation, she's no longer referring him to a Jew to be a Jew. Now from a Jew, Jesus is a prophet. Hallelujah. Now the fellowship is beginning to open particular dimensions about Jesus. He's no longer declare over your life. There's going to be a perception in your spirit that you will begin to understand deeper things about God moves from being a Jew now he is a prophet and now she's now interested this aspect of us Jews and Samaritans is no longer now in the conversation they are now beginning to talk heart to heart there's a fellowship that you can enter in with God where you begin to fellowship and communicate with him a heart to heart. And when God begins to open his heart to you, my God, you will see things you were never taught in college. You will know things that you were never taught in high school. This is the power of fellowship. It produces deeper revelation. And so there was a progressive revelation 
from a Jew to a prophet. I prophesy over your life. There's going to be pro pro progressive revelation in your life concerning Jesus. As you fellowship with him, Paul says, as we look into the law of liberty, as we look into the word of God, we are being transformed daily from glory to glory. I declare over your life, as you come every day to this uh, uh, assembly, there's going to be a transformation. There's going to be a, 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 a movement from glory to glory. Now let's go on. As they fellowship more, Jesus begins to talk about worship. He begins to talk about true worship. He begins telling her that uh, it's not about worshiping in Jerusalem. It's not about worshiping in Samaria. But the Father is seeking people going to worship him in truth and in spirit. And then now, the woman says, but you, I... I know the Messiah is coming and he will tell us all things. And then Jesus says, me, who is talking to you? I am the Messiah. Jesus help us. From a Jew. Hallelujah. First he met him as just a man, sir. Sir. If you read your Bible, the sir statement now finishes. She's no longer calling him sir. She has no word to call him. Ah, the God we serve is beyond description. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. And so as you fellowship with him, you find that even words to describe him, finish. That's why he gave us tongues. He could have, whatever that means, I don't know. But a leduza balia, uh, uh, is the spirit now giving me the language yes. to describe him? Yes. He is more than sir. Yes. There is no church here. He is more than a prophet. He says, I, who is speaking to you, I am the Messiah. Amen. Let me shock you. When you read in Matthew, the Bible says Jesus comes to his disciples and says, who do men say I am? They begin to, to guess. And then Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But before that revelation came to the apostles, before they knew that he was the Messiah, Jesus revealed that he was the Messiah to a woman. Huh? So before Peter knew, before Peter had the revelation, Jesus already revealed to this woman so the power of fellowship, God will reveal what others don't know. When others are struggling how to do the same business in the same area, my father, my maker, he will appear to you and say, my daughter, sit down. Get your paper and your diary. You've been running this business like this for too long. But let me open you up some dimensions within me that will take you to your next level. I declare may the revelation of who he is take you to your next level. And so from sir, from a Jew to a prophet and now he's no longer a prophet. He is a Messiah. And the Bible says she left her water pot and ran back the city. Amen. Remember she's a woman who has a stigma around her life. And so when she begins to talk 
nobody is ready to listen. But when she came from fellowship, when she came from having tete a tete with Jesus, the Bible says she went into the city and said, come and see a man. Hey, all these niggas I've met, they have slept with me. Hey, all these brothers I've met, they have kissed me. They have played with my hips and my, my breasts. And, uh, but I met somebody today. He is not like any other man. I was thinking he would kiss me. I was thinking he would propose me. But he opened up the book of my life and made me to understand that he is the Messiah. I thought I met a Jew, but I met the Alpha and Omega. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I prophesy, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your family. Huh? Oh God, help me here. Come and see a man. You know, like some of these niggas I see around. With trousers hanging behind their back and they speak some English that is made from hell. Where what say what? But this guy opened up the book of my life. God has got a way of entering your life and opening you up. Even when you are trying to hide that issue, he knows how to hook it out. He knows how to bring it out. And he does not condemn you. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Yet when he's investigating, his purpose is for you to see who he is. <coughs> he's more than a prophet. They said, some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are Isaiah. Some say you are Elijah. But he says, no, 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 no. They are very wrong. Who do you say I am? And the Bible says, Peter say, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looks at Peter, says, Peter, flesh and the blood has not revealed this unto you. But my Father in heaven, there are things only the Father can reveal. I enter your life. I declare what Enganga cannot give you, what Enganga cannot reveal unto you, may God reveal it unto you in the name of Jesus. And then when she went to the city, she says, come and see a man. Isn't this the Christ? Now look at this. Jesus never told her that I am the Christ. Jesus told her I am the Messiah. Amen. But when she went in the city, she never said the Messiah. Amen. She says, is this not the Christ? The revelation that Peter had later, she had it before the apostle. But then, apart from having the revelation, the progressive revelation of who Jesus was, she also discovered that she was a great evangelist. When you fellowship with him, you will see his progressive revelation. And then you will also see your progressive revelation. You begin to know what you never knew about yourself before. Some of you, you think you are just a doctor. Some of you think you are just a lawyer. 
But when you fellowship with him, you will discover you are a mighty prophet. You are a mighty prophetess. So let me say this statement. You are also a progressive revelation. Because when you were young, nobody could figure who you were going to be. But as years went by, the other aspects of you began to manifest. Ah, I thought this guy, oh, he's a lawyer. Ah, oh, he's a doctor. There's something that is hidden within you. But when you fellowship with him, it begins to come out. Oh, I am not a static man. I am a progressive revelation. If you think you can figure me out, you are just joking. Because you th today you think I am this. Then when you meet me tomorrow, I am on another dimension. I am on another level. The Bible says when Saul met the prophets, he began to prophesy. Amen. And then people began to ask, is he so among the prophets? So there was a side of him that people never knew. But when it began to manifest, they began to wonder, is this so? People are about, let me give you a Zambian language. People are about to dab about you. Meaning they are about to get shocked because they thought you were a simple South African woman. They thought you were a simple maid in the house. But when the Lord turned our captivity, we were like them that dreamed. And our mouth was filled with laughter. Your story is about to change. Your story is about to turn around. I declare receive now. Receive. 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 I'm a progressive revelation. You can't figure me out. I'm not defined by my diploma. I'm not defined by my PhD. I am a child of God. I carry Jehovah in me. I carry the Alpha and Omega. Come on, clap your hands. If you believe you are better today than you were yesterday. I was a footballer before I became what I am now. Eh? And my vision was to play for Zambia national soccer team. To make sure when we come to South Africa, I score five goals. And Bafana Bafana goes to their dressing room crying. But listen to me. As I was running in the field, kicking the ball, God was saying you are a progressive revelation. Very soon, you will no longer be kicking the ball. You will be kicking devils out. You will be kicking demons out. You will be kicking sickness out. And so when my time came, all of a sudden the ball left me. I began kicking out HIV. Kicking out sicknesses. I am a progressive revelation. You are a progressive revelation. There's a big business woman in you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been to Soweto only. You've been to Deben only. But when God fellowships with you, Dubai is opening up. China is opening up. Singapore is opening up. Europe is opening up. I am a progressive revelation. Turn around and say, I am a progressive revelation. Oh yes, the devil is a liar. I prophesy, devil for sake, I prophesy things are getting better. Things are getting well. You are turning around. Your future is getting better because you are fellowshipping with him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. From glory to glory, 
from blessing to blessing, from favor to favor, from joy to joy, from power to power, continent to continent, nation to nation, city to city. I declare, receive, 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 receive. When you mind God, and if you don't know God, and I throw it on the street, you buy it. Huh? It's because you don't know it. But when it's processed, I throw a golden ring on the street, you don't bypass it. Why? It has gone through a progressive revelation. Some of you, three, five years ago, if I met you, you looked like Boko Haram. Huh? You looked like the second wife of Osama Bin Laden. Have you ever met men that when they were outside church, they looked very ugly. But the moment they got in church, they got born again. They began speaking in tongues. Do you know if you speak in tongues more, your teeth will become whiter. More than when you are using Colgate. Ezembe Tekusa is powerful than Colgate. It kills bacteria. Come on, clap your hands, clap your hands. The Bible says, not the Bible, there's a song we sing in Zambia. It says, I'm not a good singer. Huh? So you Doba my, 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 my. Prophet, give me one week to come and teach your choir how to sing. <laughs> the song says, Anani Doba, he picked me. Anani Suka, he washed me. He washes clear than Omo. When you enter church, all the wrinkles from bars begin to disappear. I am a progressive revelation. As you fellowship with him, he makes you more beautiful. Oh. If there are more people who are beautiful and handsome, is born again believers. How can you carry the Holy Ghost and remain ugly? He will give you beautiful ashes. It's not only spiritual. Some people look like ash. But when he enters them, he gives them beauty. He polishes. God knows how to polish people. Some of you used to look like if you gave anger you. It's like you are a cousin to Goliath.
God. And so she left the water pot and ran back to the city where people were looking down on her. And the Bible says the entire city left the city. Oh, I had something in my spirit. Okay, it's fine. When I say it, she went into the city and told them about Jesus and the entire city came out. The entire city was converted already. There's coming an anointing. For cities and nations, mama. That every city that you enter in, the evangelistic anointing, the anointing to plant churches, will you manifest. It will bring men and women out of their issues. Your voice shall be heard. It just hit me when you looked at me. Somebody clap your hands. Don't be jealous. If you can celebrate. If you can celebrate a prophecy, you can collect your own. You can collect your own. Collect your prophecy. Collect your prophecy. I prophesy your voice shall be heard in high places. Your voice shall be heard in high offices. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Eya kapasu kataya. Elukas kabaraya kataya. The entire city left the city. They went where Jesus was. And do you know that where Jesus was seated, it was the well of Jacob. A well symbolizes generational blessing. When there's a generational blessing on your life, God will give you a voice. But she left the water pot. Let me give you a revelation. I'll be done soon. She came to get water. But after fellowshipping with him, after discovering who she was, what she had come for, which at first mattered to her, mattered less now. Because she discovered a greater dimension Amen. than just coming to the well to collect water. Listen to me. When you fellowship with him, what you thought was important will become nothing. Paul says, I count all things as nothing for the sake of knowing Christ that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Now, mm, Jesus The disciples come now back with food. Say, sir, can you have your lunch? Then he says, I don't want to eat. I have eaten food that you do not know about. Ha! So when I saw that, there's a level in God where food loses value says I've eaten something that you did not you don't know about and now then 
after the Passover week, after Jesus died, when he resurrected on a Sunday morning, that very Sunday, the Bible says two disciples were walking, going to a mouse. And the word of God tells me that they were talking about Jesus and the things concerning him. And Jesus joined them as they were walking. Can I have two brothers? Two sisters. Brothers are very... One. Walk like a brother. Oh. <laughs> they are walking from Jerusalem to a village. Now, Jerusalem is, is a symbol of uh, the presence of God. So now they are walking to a village away from the presence. They are going towards something else. And so, Jesus joins them. And they are talking about I'm Jesus now. They are talking about me. And yet they don't know that they are talking about me. And they are walking. And then Jesus says, ah, what kind of conversation is this? And then Cleopas says, e, are you the only stranger who does not know what is happening in the city? Very possible that you can take your seats, please. You can be walking with him, coming to church every Sunday, dropping your offering on the altar, talking about him, and he's beside you, and yet you don't know him. But the Bible says, as they were walking, now, all of a sudden, he turns to them and says, oh, you foolish people. He began to open the scriptures to them. But still more, they don't know him. And the Bible says, when they sat down, it says, when they almost reached the village where they were going, Jesus pretended as though he was going further. Sometimes pretend. But they constrained him to stay with them. Bible says when they act, that's fellowship, eh? They have been fellowshipping all along the road. They never knew him. He's talking. He's throwing revelation. And they are listening. When they sat, they sat to eat. I told you, when you sit to eat, you begin to hear things you never heard. And the Bible says, he got the bread and he broke it. And then their eyes were opened. When they joined, when he joined them, he was, are you the only stranger? He was a stranger to them. But when they had fellowshiped enough, their eyes opened and they knew this is the Messiah. How much do you know him? Now look, when he disappeared, the Bible says the same hour they returned where? To Jerusalem. They were going somewhere. But after seeing him, after fellowshipping with him, they changed their mind. The journey changed. The direction changed. They were going this direction. 
But after fellowshipping with him, when they knew him, he turned around and he went back to Jerusalem. I declare over your life. I declare over your life. There's going to be a revelation tonight that will come in your spirit. That will change the direction of your life. Come, come here, come here. Yes, yes. Walk like you are prophetic. Are you married? Not yet. Lift up your hands. I release marriage over your life. Whatever said no to you, Ila Kutaba, you are a beautiful woman. But whatever has put a veil over you is cancelled. I break it in the name of Jesus. Every single day, say, my father, my father. Whatever has blocked my marriage, die by fire. Expire by fire. Every single lady, get, touch your, your ring fing, finger. Declare, my father, my father, whatever has married me and has put a demonic ring on my finger, expire by fire tonight. Expire by fire. As I pray for her, every single person that has been fighting a marital battle, I declare the battle is over. You were choker. And the one. They hear. Demons, they hear these languages. Don't worry. Choker, zwa. Come out. Your spirit husband. Molesting her destiny. Eating her money. Closing doors. I command you. Liver. Liver, every baby in your womb that the devil has put, every pregnancy, I abort it now. I abort it now. I abort it now. I abort it now. Come out. Spiritual baby, die. Die, 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 die. die. She's carrying babies in her spiritual womb. Come out. Come out. If there's no man who can marry her like this. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. Lusa. Shut up. Who, who are you? Who are you? You ancestral husband. There, there's a demonic spirit, an ancestral spirit from a family that has married her. And he do not allow any man to marry her. Now, look at me. Do you have any money with you? See, there's even a coin, anything. Go bring something. I, I pray for you. Walk like you are prophetic. These are things. Now, if you see what has, has happened, she has fellowship in the presence of God and progressively she's beginning to discover that there's something concerning her that she never knew. She's supposed to be very rich now. As you bring that seed... Put that seed on my on my feet. If I be a man of God, touch my shoes. As you are touching my shoes, I deliver you. I deliver you from that spiritual husband. Receive your money. Uh huh. Uh huh. Come out. Go. 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 I release a billions in the name of receive, 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 receive. Lusa by the power of the seed. I lose your billions. Come on. 
remove the money where you buried it. Remove it, remove it quickly. Iwe choka. Chosa ndalama, chosa ndalama. Chosa ndalama mangusula in the name of Jesus. I untie her. I untie her. I untie her. I exhume your money in the name of Jesus. Leave her, leave her. Just clap your hands. Something is breaking. Anybody here, you've been dream dreaming of huge sums of money, but nothing around your life. Where are you? Quickly come. Ah, walk like you're prophetic. Come and shake my hand. Loose. Quickly. Loose you. I lose you. I lose you. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Look at me. Quickly, just shake my hand. Something is breaking. I lose your money. Come here. Stand up. Liver, liver. Iwe. Choka. Uipa kumenso. Get out. Come out. Poverty. Liver. Somebody declare, my father, my father. I declare, as I fellowship with you, divine revelation concerning my life, concerning my family, in Jesus' name. Bless you. Are you married? You are not married. Just wanna say, Baba, oh, and share. Let me tell you something, Kami. I just wanna say, the enemy wants to make you feel you don't qualify for certain blessings and levels in your life. But I declare today there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. I, I declare as I lay my hand on you whatever has condemned you lose her. Ah. I don't know. The, usually when I pray for people like this I usually see this many times on people's hands. I usually see double hands like this on one hand. And usually it's like there's a hand on top of your hand. Eh? But every time you go to get what is yours, before you collect, this hand on top of you collects. There's a demonic system. There's a demonic covenant that was made which you are still paying a long time ago. Dollar. Before you were born. So you are paying a debt that you don't know about. 
And so what we do as men of God, we don't only operate in the natural. We enter into the realms of the spirit. Amen. Huh? The Bible says when Abraham was paying tithe, Levi was also paying tithe. So it was as good as Levi was also there. So when your great-grandfather, mother, uncle, went to make this covenant, you were in their loins. It was as good as you being present. In the spirit, there is no past. There is no present. There is no future. Right now, I am standing on that particular day in the past when that demonic covenant was made and I stand I declare the covenant is broken receive what you have never dreamt possible in Jesus name sir I declare every ancestral power fighting your life I cancel it in Jesus name Receive your own. I say receive your own. 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 You are fellowshipping with him. And progressively you are discovering who you are. And you are discovering who he is. Things are getting better. Tell your neighbor things are getting better. The direction of your life is changing. The power of fellowshipping with him. Just for two minutes, rise up to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, choir. As you fellowship with him, may he show you who you are. May he reveal himself to you. Ah! 
Come on, open up your spirit. Talk in the Holy Ghost. Come on, open up, open up, open up. Open up, open up, open up, open up. Open up your spirit. Open up, open up, open up, open up. Shiva, ba 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 ba. Ira da ba 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 ba. Open up your spirit. Open up your spirit. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Ila la 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 ba. Shala ba ba. Ila ba ba ba. Ya chala ba ba. Ika chala ba ba ba. Ira ba ba ha ya chile. Ika chala ba ya cha. Ira ba ba ha ya kate. Ila ba 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 ba, shata la ba, eka ta la ba ya ta, ira ka ta la ba ya ta, ira ta 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 ta. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. Oh, hallelujah. Stand up. Open up, open up, open up your spirit. Iya la 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 busa, iya la ba 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 ba. Ila la 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 busa ya ba ba, ila la 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 bu, ila la 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 busa ya ba ba, ila ba 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 ba, ila la 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 bu. Say it a bit. atmosphere as we began to worship God I began to see something in my spirit I saw like people that were swimming across an ocean and the spirit of the Lord told me say he's about to anoint a few people for business people who you go beyond Africa is an anointing to cross oceans is an anointing for serious business serious business serious business aha 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 aya babu si ala kaya babu hose ila la 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 bo shande hallelujah now 
Aïe, 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 kaba. If you are here, you are believing God, you are in business. Some people need to force them to sow a seed. This is a, is a category for business people. I saw somebody crossing over the oceans. The Bible says they that do business in deep waters shall see the mighty hand of God. Amen. If you are here, you are saying, Bishop, tomorrow I'll give you a 2,000. A 2,000 rand as a, a seed. For me to enter another Ika to Sapa, another dimension of business. I want you to rush. Come and get an envelope and stand with me here. Shima, where are you? For you, I don't know. I love to force you. 2,000. Tomorrow you will meet me here. You give me 2,000. something. I'll tell you something tomorrow. Quickly, business people face quickly. Ay. Quickly, business, just business. Can I have uh, the last one? I need five Come this side, Chima. The last one. A woman, quickly. You know when the waters are provoked like this, a woman or oh, quickly, even two or quickly. Already, something is happening in her stomach. Uh -huh. Dubai. Singapore, China. I, I need to help her. 